And click like, got it. Um, I'm going to the intros before this, but okay. hi, my friend. I'm so happy you're here. Friend. Ah, it's an absolute honor. I'm just loving connecting with you again, babe. I know. And you're technically, well, not technically, you are the first guest that we've had on this podcast. Oh my gosh, that's even more of an honor. <laughs> So everyone, this is Julia, if you want to introduce yourself to the people. Yeah, hi everybody. So I'm Julia. <laughs> I am the founder and CEO of a vegan health food brand in Bangkok. Um, we focus on vegan desserts and we also have a vegan cafe um, right in the middle of Bangkok. So yeah, I'm a businesswoman, an entrepreneur, a CEO. Um, and a female empowerment advocate. And she's like the funniest person I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah. actually, like, I don't yeah. actually take myself that seriously <laughs> either. <laughs> I met Julia I don't even know how many years ago but it was when I was living in Asia because I lived in Bangkok for six years yeah. and I remember I met you at the Hive it was one of their I don't know what was going on one of their health event things yeah and you just you were there selling your bread and you had like this big headdress on and it's like this outfit and I was like I'm gonna be her friend like we're gonna be friends. <laughs> who is that and what is she doing and I remember too you're like I had a bunch of gin and tonics last night I feel like I should name a bread after that and I was like, we're <laughs> definitely going to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that moment as well of just, I mean, having this gin and tonic and just pouring it in a banana bread and thinking, <laughs> yeah, I think that'll work. And then selling it the next day. And I was like, God, I love this business because it was super new when I met you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it was just starting <laughs> out. Um, before we dive in, I want to start with the question of in this present moment, what is something that you're currently like healing your way to happy on? Like, working on yourself working through things what's that current thing oh you? your questions are so good babe I'm so <laughs> glad you asked that that may, almost makes me want to cry because we're getting <laughs> so deep straight away that's brilliant um oh let's think um okay so I think it's actually very relevant to what we're going to talk about today but um and I've, I've got a therapy session after this actually and I've planned to talk about this um but I'm navigating my way through a kind of new relationship at the moment. And um, it's very new, um, it's very exciting, but I feel like I'm not very good at relationships. Um, I've always felt that. I feel like I haven't had a strong foundation to learn from. Um, and I've never really seen a successful relationship, especially kind of in my you know childhood days. Um, and I, I know that I treat my partners quite differently to how I treat my friends and the other people in my life. Um, and it's something that kind of just happens. Um, obviously we're always in control, but I wanna be better this time. You know, and I'm not saying that this is even going to be a relationship that lasts for the rest of my life, who knows, right? I don't wanna kind of put that pressure on it, but I do know that I want to change my behavior in this one and I've done so much healing work since my last breakup and I do definitely feel different but I want to be super mindful and I'm also kind of scared of you know kind of hurting this person by behaving in ways that I have done in in the past that's really honest and very mm -hmm. raw yeah I love your soul I love it so yeah. much and like the fact <laughs> that you're like getting out there again and like showing yourself and not like that is relationships though. Like you're good on your own and then you get into this partnership and it's like, oh, wait, that pattern I'm yeah. trying to unlearn isn't fully unlearned yet. Like now I have some yeah. mirrored back and how do I want to comfortably navigate this so that yeah. I, don't, I don't carry that trauma with me into the next chapter. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. And you're so right. It's, it's really difficult to do this work when you're on your own. Right. Because I always think when I'm single, oh, I'm going to be great in my next relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting any of these triggers anymore. You know, I'm not feeling the things that I felt in my last relationship. And then I get into something new and I'm like, oh, there it is. You know, because you can be triggered in a way by a partner that you're not triggered by anybody else. Exactly. That's, that's the thing. Yo, so I was doing our breakout podcast before this one. So it'll come out before yeah. these two will come out <laughs> together, but like, yeah. that's what I was talking about that. Like this, what we attract that energy, right? Like I yeah. attract these like young souls and 
you know, I feel like I'm an old soul. And that was something we talked about in our voice notes where it was like, I attract this and why? Like, what is it? I find it playful. It awakens me. It keeps me young. I really do like it. But what is that? And I realized because it's this fear of that strong masculine man, because when you're in relationship with someone's in like very strong masculine and a good balance in their feminine, it brings out that shadow in you. Like they're going to express those shadows. Right. So it's like kind of safety mechanism. And yet this crave to fully be seen, but then not choosing the people that would fully see you. You know what I mean? hundred percent. It's also a confidence thing as well, right? Of feeling like maybe I'm not ready to attract this kind of high level person that would be much better for me, right? Maybe if I keep it on a, a lower vibration of somebody that I know isn't quite right, it doesn't matter if it doesn't work out, right? So much, you know, it's not as powerful because I'm exactly the same. I always attract young souls mm-hmm. and they seem to be, most kind of interested in me and I just go with it but you know this time I really wanted that to be different as well yeah I'm proud of you that's amazing I'm so I'm like really interested and intrigued to just see how it goes like where like you were spot on where it's like who knows where it goes but like who do you become who do you become in that process right like what's that evolution of becoming within that container wherever that goes it's more so focused on the individual you your soul your evolution how do I change my patterning so I can create something that is you know evolving over time a hundred percent and you know that's the thing about relationships right every single one teaches us so many different things I was thinking actually before I came on this podcast you know about the fact that I'm so happy that I didn't end up with the person that I wanted to end up with, Mm -hmm. right? And that's been different throughout my life. But I remember when I was 18, right? And I met this guy and and it was my first love. And I fell so deeply in love. I mean, I would have got his name tattooed across my eyeballs. I was (laughs) like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. I love you. Um, And it was such a, you know, that first flush of love. And I wanted to marry him and I would have said yes and I would have got married if, you know, he had a wanted that too. I don't think he did. But um, but honestly, I'm so glad that I didn't end up getting married to him and I didn't end up spending the rest of my life with him because even though I've had lots of relationships after that that haven't worked, each one has taught me so many different things and, you know, even just new perspectives, the connection, the level of connection has been so different with every single one, that the different levels of love that I felt from each man, you know, it's really beautiful, this kind of rich experience. And to only have that with one person, and this is wildly controversial, I know, but to only have that with one person, for me personally, would have been a shame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's like the, it's the onions getting peeled back and every time, like, yeah. Yo, if I think about the partners in Bangkok I was supposed to end up with, like what? Like to think of the things that we could have gotten stuck inside of and the, I don't know, like each one is so different and so raw and so interesting. And when we actually get to sit down and, I don't know, look at it, right? Like that kind of what takes the pressure off of like, is this the one? Is this the person that I'm gonna fall in love with? Is this the person that's gonna be the ultimate end all be all kind of thing? It's like, or is just, can this just be a moment that you're learning yeah. that, the person that may ultimately end to this like divine love orgasmic kind of expression, but is it really, when we take that pressure off, it also takes the trauma off of it. Cause otherwise yes. we're running around being like, will you choose me? Will you love me? Will you heal this wound? Will you choose me? Will you? And like, yeah. it's this forever finding a place of like, where do I belong? But we take that I'm, pressure off and it's like, yeah. you know, it's, yeah you're right it's so much pressure and so much pressure on the other person as well of you know kind of thinking I need you to be like this because you're going to be in my life forever I mean what pressure instead of being like I'm loving what's happening right now and I'm super happy with everything that's happening right now I love the way I feel I don't know we don't ever know how we're going to feel for the rest of our lives right with the way that society has kind of painted the way that relationships should look and what we should have by a certain age, you know, what we should have in, you know, when we get older. If we took all that out of it, we'd just be having beautiful moments and beautiful times with different people. 
and it would be so much more fluid and and we'd be able to go with the flow and the, the highest state of happiness is actually flow mm-hmm. isn't it so funny though because as you were speaking I'm just thinking like and that's how we are with our girlfriends yeah right? like we don't yeah. have that pressure like I don't I haven't seen you in how long and yet you're still a very close person in my life you know yeah. like yeah so everyone in Bangkok but like if it was a guy and it's supposed to be my, I'm like, oh my God, like, why, why didn't you, you text, text me? me every day? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, wait, you're supposed to text me on the hour, every hour. Let me know what you're doing. What does your hair smell like? Like, like what's yeah. happening behind your left fingernail? Yeah. Like what's going on? And yeah. it's like, yeah. huh? And it's this like insecurity kind of thing that yes. like, I mean, you probably experience that too. Like in the single years, that's where you learn it. If you're not chasing yeah. to get validated and you're not ju- jumping around trying to find the next mate, like you t- it, intentionally take that single chapter of your life to be like, who am I? Where do I want to belong? Not just like, where have I belonged, but where do I actually choose to belong? We start yeah. thinking that it's going to be found in this, even money, you know, money, sex, power. There's a reason those things run everything, but we think that's going to give mm-hmm. us this validation thing that we're seeking from these external sources. When at the core, it's you. And you can only yeah. find that if you actually sit in that really sacred, annoying, frustrating, isolating in between period. Yes. It's so true, isn't it? And I just wanted to touch on something you said that, you know, when we're kind of in this insecurity state, right? And we're kind of trying to almost, and it sounds kind of strong, but almost try and push someone into being what we want them to be or into behaving in the ways that we want them to behave. We're not only taking away an element of their freedom, of expression, right? But we're also taking away our freedom as well, right? Because, and for me, that's one of the biggest issues in relationships that I haven't felt as free as I feel when I'm single, you know? And that's part of it. I feel so kind of tied to the way that things should be and so reactive when they're when they're not. And I'm not like that with anybody else. So it's so much more free. And it's almost not fair, right? To take the freedom of, uh, from somebody else because allowed to be whoever you are and behave in whatever way right and if that doesn't match that's also okay you know exactly. Um, exactly but I think that's what's lovely about that space in between as well what you were just saying is that god that that's when those kinds of insights happen right you know I think if I hadn't spent so long in spaces in between I don't think I would have arrived at this place, right? I think I would have gone into the next one in exactly the same way as I did the last one. Mm-hmm. That's that's the like that's the space that I'm in right now, right? Where it's like, yeah. yo, I like downloaded Bumble for like five minutes just to make sure yeah, the species of course. like yeah. still existed, and like yeah. I spent three of those five <laughs> minutes updating my pictures. I'm like, I'm not blonde anymore. Like this needs to be better. But like, yeah. it was like, and then sitting there and being like, I don't actually want to escape this pain right now. Like, I don't want yeah. to like move past it because, you know, there is so much gold to be found inside the grief. And that's, you know, what we're talking about today, grief after breakup yeah. and conscious and like yeah. what happens next and things like that. But it's like, there is such a sacredness to it as uncomfortable as it is like, numbing it out, drinking it out, bitching it out, doing the things, all the things like you're going to go through those, but it has to be a both and conversation, right? Like it has to be a, yes, I'm doing these things because sometimes I want to go escape and do whatever. And that's totally fucking fine. But what else are you doing on the other side of that? Are you also facing it, sitting in the depths, sitting in your tears, like being in that stage of like, I need like breakups are a trauma. You have to grieve yes. that to understand yeah. who you are. Otherwise you're carrying that from relationship to relationship and wondering why, you know, you dated a guy for three months and all of a sudden you're like crushed and you're like, why am I so sad? Like, I don't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know. And that's the thing, isn't it? I just remember kind of delving so deeply when I went through my last breakup of, you know, why do I need to feel this pain? Right. And because it's so awful. And I didn't feel at the time like it was kind of happening on the other side. And I was thinking, well, maybe I should just do, you know, what my ex-partner's doing. Because it looks like way better than what I'm doing. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um, And, you know, it's not pretty. It's not exciting. And it's really, really hard. But that is the work, right? When I used to wonder what people meant by saying you have to do the work. And I was like, but what is the work? Like, what, what is that? No, I want to do it, but I don't know what to do. 
Um, and really that work is feeling the pain because there is actually no other way to properly and actually and really get out the other side. That you can't go over, you can't, and you can't go under, you've got to go through it. And when I mean the other side, that, you know, that saying of like, there's light at the end of the tunnel. I totally understand that phrase now because it, the light is so much brighter when you get out of the other side, if you go through that dark tunnel, right? It is the brightest light. I'm in the brightest light I've ever felt in my life. And I wouldn't have got there if I had have tried to go over or under. Eventually, you'll have to go through at some point in your life. You know, there'll be some, as you said, there'll be something that happens that will trigger you to go through that trauma needs to come out of the body. And, and you're right, it could be like a three month relationship where you're like, hang on, what? <laughs> but it's all of the trauma coming up. So it will come out. So yeah. you might as well do it when you're feeling it anyway. Exactly. And, and like, that's the thing is like, because I get a lot of questions around like, well, how much time to do the work? And like, mm. and I'm like, I don't, until you're unattached to the outcome of your next relationship, right? Like if you're thinking like, okay, mm -hmm. this next person needs to be my person, then mm -hmm. it's still too soon. You know, yeah. it's still too yeah. soon because you're still looking for this validation in like, avoidance I don't even know if the thing would be grief anymore it's just the void yeah. of solitude and loneliness right and it's like when you get to a space of like okay I'm good on my own and now I want someone to help elevate that not to exist with yeah. it like to make it existent it's like I'm good and this is a bonus exactly exactly and I think you know if you go into relationships being unhealed and not having done the work there is a deep level of codependency that happens in that next relationship, right? Because you're like, I need this relationship because if I don't have it, I'm gonna have to go back into that painful state. And so it becomes deeply codependent. And oh my gosh, when you're codependent, that, that is not freedom. And honestly, freedom is just the best feeling. For me, freedom is the best state that I could ever be in, you know, and we're so blessed, right? And, you know, with our kind of lifestyle and, and you know, our, our economic status, we're so blessed that we can be free, right? And it's like, we put ourselves into these shackles sometimes by being so scared of actually what's really natural. You know, if you look at animals, if they're going through grief, um, I think it's, no, I watched this documentary with these um, antelope, right? <laughs> it taught <laughs> me so much. <laughs> Babe, it was a dark, long time, okay? It lasted ages. <laughs> and I was watching this documentary, but it was so beautiful. So there was these antelope and they were running as a pack and they realized that there was a lion there, right? And the lion started chasing one of them, um, like the weakest one, and it didn't get away. And the lion kind of had it in its jaws and, it, and the antelope started playing dead. And then the lion went to go and get its cubs to go and get the cubs to kind of come and feed on it. And the antelope got away. And it was like this, the whole pack of the antelope after they got away was kind of shaking off this trauma, right? And they were, it was mad the way that they were shaking and they were jumping all together to get rid of this trauma. And they instinctively knew, nobody's told these antelope, by the way, you've got to jump around if something shit happens, right? It's like, they, would, they just knew that they had to do that. And then it was, they got into kind of this circle and they put the antelope that had been attacked in the middle. And the antelope was kind of just sitting and kind of nursing its wounds and they were just walking around. And they knew that there was a period of kind of grieving and healing that had to happen after that. And I think if we weren't so scared of what that looked like, mm. it would come so much more naturally to us and we'd do the work we needed to do and then we would move on. Isn't that wild? That yeah. is fucking fascinating. And I always <laughs> like literally, I was like, where's she going with this animal story? I love it. <laughs> but it's the same thing with dogs. Like, you know, my best friend has her dog here. And like I just like watch him and witness him. And he's like, and I'll just be like, Remy, shake it out. And he'll be like, my boobs are too I do that. I'm not wearing a bra. <laughs> I noticed that it was great. It was great. Hey, how are you doing? 
Um, but it's so true. And it's just like wanting to bypass it where it's like all of a sudden this grief means I failed. I'm unlovable. Yeah. I'm unworthy. Let me avoid this. Let me escape this instead of sitting it and going, what are you teaching me? Like, yeah. what's this pattern that keeps coming up in li- my life? And how can I actually heal this? Because, you know, that's, I mean, that's what I healed. It was codependency. I did the 12 steps and Al-Anon and Coda and all that kind of stuff, because coming out of the relationship I had prior to Elvis, I mean, that was all codependency. It was addiction, yeah. it was domestic yeah. violence. It was all that kind of stuff. So it was important that I don't ever do that again. And that took me ages. Like you walked with me on that. Like that took so long to unhitch my little saddle from that. But that yeah. is literally why now in this breakup, I'm only dealing with this feeling. I'm only dealing with the like mourning of the loss of the potentiality that will no longer be, right? Like that's yeah. what I'm sad about. I'm not sad about he meant this and I'm unworthy and da, 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 da. Like the narratives that we tell ourselves, it's like, you're just grieving the present moment because the nervous system has like shook it out from all the years prior. Like, I'm curious to see if that's kind of how it is for you now, as you're entering the dating scene and you've spent your time being in your, you know, single years, doing all the work, creating magnificent things out of it really. Mm -hmm. And then stepping into this chapter, do you feel like that's kind of the energy that's coming through? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember one thing I kept saying to myself is there is no light without darkness. Right. And I think, I think one thing that we need to become way more comfortable in is the darkness, you know, and I think, again, that's something that we've been taught, you know, we shouldn't feel sad. We should always be happy. And if we feel sad, we need to explain it and fix it. Right. And actually, when it comes to grief, like breakups, there isn't a fix. The fix would be getting back with them. Right. Mm -hmm. And when it's done and it's not right, that isn't actually a fix. Right. So actually there isn't a fix and and you don't need to explain why you're sad after a breakup, right? It just is a shit sad time. And and there's nothing wrong with that. And being really comfortable in, in that is when you can actually learn deep lessons. And I think that's again, where we can learn from animals. You know, they let themselves be really sad for as long as it lasts and it always passes because it always does, right? Lightness and dark exist together. And that's, I think, something that I had to keep reminding myself of, you know, when I was going through my breakup. And I think, I think kind of moving into this new stage has just been really powerful. And it honestly does make me emotional because I did reach points during that break, the breakup period and the single period, which lasted for about a year and a half, you know, coming up to two years now. I did wonder many times, how long is this going to last for? You know, am I, I don't know how much longer I can actually feel like this. You know, and I kind of kept moving between deep sadness and anger. And there was one point where I was so angry, uh, it was kind of affecting my life. And I kind of was thinking, he doesn't even know I'm angry, right? <laughs> like, and I know he's like having a great time, you know, doing what he's doing. And, and you know, so, I, and I knew that and that was making me even more angry you know and I I would kind of sit in my cafe sometimes and and I remember saying to one of my friends I genuinely don't know how long I could be this angry for because it, I am like spitting nails and you know every time I would work out it would come up when I was meditating it would come up and then you know, it was, I remember talking to a breakup coach, Dorothy, you mm-hmm. maybe get her on this podcast as well, because she's amazing and she's such good insights. And she said to me, there will be one day where you will just let it go. And she said, it will be really bizarre because she said, you know, obviously there's work that happens before that. And it is a buildup, but she said, there will be one day when you let it go and it's done. And I was like, no, there won't. How can that be when I feel like this one day? And it happened, right? And I was, uh, it was just mad for me. I finished a yoga class on New Year's Eve and I lay back at the end of it and I just cried and I knew that that was the moment I had to let it go. And I, it was so beautiful and so kind of traumatic that it was New Year's Eve, right? And the new year was about to start, but it wasn't planned, it just happened. And I, I was in England at the time and I was staying at my mum's house and I remember saying to my mum, I need to, I know I need to do this now. And I realised that one of the 
reasons I was holding on to the anger so much is because I wanted to keep him in my life in some way. And so it was such a strong emotion because I was really kind of trying to keep him and I was feeling like it was slipping away month after month. And, mm -hmm. and it was done, obviously. But, you know, that was a way of keeping myself connected to him. And feel, knowing that was so hard as well. And I remember my mum saying to me, you don't have to tell him that you're forgiving him. You don't have to tell him that you feel okay about this now and that you're letting him go. Because this isn't about him. This is about you. And um, that kind of spoke quite deeply to me. And I, I cried a lot. And, and it, I mean, it wasn't like the next day I woke up and I was like, brilliant, great, it's, it's done. But there was a really kind of, a process after that that I just started feeling lighter and lighter and lighter and you know now it's like ugh, I really feel so much better not even better I'm in a completely different state completely different I feel like the I feel like so grateful for the trauma. I feel grateful for the lessons. I'm so glad I went through what I went through. And I feel the best, the happiest. And I, there's a level of light in me at the moment that I have never felt in my life before, ever. And there's a deep connection with myself to the point where, you know, I'm still technically single. I don't even feel single because there's such a, I've got such a deep relationship with myself that it's like, what do you mean single like I'm so whole <laughs> I love you so much you touched, and you touched on it too because my next question was going to be how is your heart right now and how yeah. has it been going with that but it's just like you're beaming I'm upset yeah I'm beaming and I'm just so excited about life and mm -hmm. I tell you what the other thing about feeling the pain is you teach yourself with doing it without distraction you teach yourself that you can handle the dark stuff, right? And I promise you that that helps you up level because you know that you can call in really high level stuff because, and if it doesn't work, you know you're all right. Mm -hmm. like it might take you a while and that's totally fine, but you know you'll be okay. And so the stuff that starts coming to you is on a much higher scale. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you were talking earlier about, you know, you know, business pivoting and you know your relationship ending at the same time and all of that kind of thing you will see as you start to you know you're telling the universe I'm just I'm choosing myself I'm choosing my healing because I know that in the long run this is going to be better for, for me that in itself is such a high vibration you'll see that you will start to attract really high vibe stuff Oh, hundred percent. Like literally that's the masterclass that we have coming out next, next, yeah. next week. Yeah. So when this is when, after this is launch, but yeah. um, it's called duality, right? Like leading with a healing heart, because it's one of those things of when you have actually navigated pain, like in everyone has, right. But sometimes we're a little softer with it. Sometimes it's like, yeah, right. holy pickles. Like this is what you've yeah. been through. And this is how you're so giggling. Like what the heck? Like you hear these stories all the time. Right. And it's like, when you can hold that capacity, that's like the universal test of like, how are we going to handle? It's not to say we're always going to get it right. We're not always going to get the dark side of things, but it's like, can you hold the potentiality of that happening? And I know for me, yeah. core belief was I can't build a successful business with a relationship. And I don't know if I can choose one or the other. And it was one of those things where like, when I shot my prayer after God being like, give me the death I need to rise to my highest power. Like literally that's what happened before everything collapsed. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like, sitting there, but it's also with that thing where it's like, I'm also capable of holding those things and being able to like sit in that and trust and being like, we know how to stand back up. Like you're going to be on the floor for a little bit. And that's totally fucking fine. Sit there, yeah. calibrate your nervous system, call your girlfriends, do the things you have to do. But at the same time, you know, you're going to get up. Like eventually over time, it's going to look different. It's going to be ripped away from the comfort blankets of where you were at because that was your core belief, you know, and to yeah. show you these things, sometimes it'll give you this really good love and then it'll take it away. Cause that's, what is the narrative at the end of it? Like, what is that actual deep fear of like, can I hold this love? Can I do this while I'm also chasing this and doing that? It's like these narratives we tell ourselves, the universe is going to come back in and be like, well, 
let's like poke the bear a little bit and see what happens. And it's like, well, how do you hold it in those moments? And that is where it comes from, where it's like, now I know like the world is limitless, right? It's like to sit there and like, I saw things happening and I was just like, um, no, thank you. Like, I'm going to pass on all of that quant, like I'm witnessing it happening. And I realize even in those moments, I'm safe. Like, no matter what, like what we were talking about earlier, I was like, I'll live on a friend's couch. Like I'll go move to South America. I'll go do this. I'll take some ayahuasca. Like it's fine. And then, but it's also sitting there being like, I can do that. And that's a great backup plan. That isn't even that bad, but I choose no, you know? And like, that's where we get to set that caliber. When we have these conversations between the dark and the light, it's like, I can see the dark and cause my brain, like, if you've witnessed this, like your brain goes into this like worst case scenario thing. And then that's all you're thinking of. And yeah. you like forget the polar opposite of, but what if, you know, instead of yeah. the, what about all of this stuff happening? Like, what if there's potential yeah. limitless things and you can have the love and you can have the travels and you can have the orgasms and you can have the money and you can do yeah. all this kind of stuff. Like what if, and what about can coexist together so that they can make yeah. this a reality. Yeah. And there's always that stuff available, right? Mm -hmm. It's always there. You can always call it in. And this is one thing that really spoke to me as well. This is not the end, Mm -hmm. right? You know, when you break up with something or, or something dies, whatever it is, you know, it's there's more to come. And I remember writing that in my journal and just feeling it so deeply, like there's more to come. Cause I think that's the scary bit about when you get out of a you know, even just, you know, you change your job or, you know, something changes or the death of anything, we kind of feel like, well, that's it then, you know, and it's like, no, it's not. And I love that um, prayer that you said, God, that just gave me goosebumps where you said, you know, what did you say? Give me the death that I need to rise. Rise to my highest potential. Yeah. Uh, And I mean, that's amazing, babe, because that is you knowing that something wasn't working, Mm -hmm. right? You know, and you knowing that something needed to die. And when anything dies, it's always sad. It's always sad, but you're right. But the the sadness is part of the rising as well. If you look at anything that, that dies, something else opens, even in nature, right? Something else always blooms. Like even, you know, the death of, winter everything dies but then it's just to make way for spring for like new things to like spring and then you every spring you're like god that's way more beautiful than I (laughs) than it was last year (laughs) you know (laughs) they're so vibrant I'm such a fan (laughs) it is funny though because it's one of those things like we I always start things it's so funny though um you notice when you do a podcast all the phrases you overuse and you're like like I kept saying I think in my last one I said portal of activation like 800 times and I was like (laughs) bruh different words I like know. come on come on I know you get hooked on one thing <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, running out of words yeah. um but just kind of witnessing the letting it go right I wrote in my journal going like the thing that scares me the most kind of exactly what you were talking about with your previous relationship where it shows up in anger right like anger is just compounded yeah. fear like that's an emotional yeah. compounded fear at the yeah. end of the day and like I was writing in my journal being like my fear is that one day, like all these spots that are like ours are now just like a faint memory that I will laugh about to myself, like who, with whomever I am with, instead of reminiscing on that with you, like, that's what I'm sad about. It's yeah. not all this, like not being chosen, not being thing. It's like the death of the future, right. That, or the death of the reminiscence and these kind of things where it's like, that's the grief right? Where it's like, instead of being old and gray and walking past these things and thinking of these memories of what had together, it's now a, oh, and like, it'll all like smirk to myself by myself, you know? And then yeah. also sitting in that being like, but I'm okay. Cause that means I would be smirking with myself with someone else, you know, because it's, yeah. it's that core belief. Like I hold it so big to my soul. If not this something better always, yeah. you know? And yeah. It, And like to sit in that and to trust that with every fiber of your being, it's like universe doesn't make mistakes. And even though like they're hard and they don't make sense and you want to interrupt it, it's always a God damn it, Laura, portal of activation. (laughs) (laughs) I knew it was coming. I had to talk. (laughs) Like Laura. But it really is. It's a slingshot into the future where it's like this, if if you believe that, right? Like if you truly believe like 
I can't even fathom a love better than the one that I had. I really like can't even wrap my head around it. And that's also terrifying. And then you sit there and you're like, but holy ravioli that exists then. Like, let me try and welcome that in and regulate my nervous system to be like, oh, okay. Like, I guess that's what the universe has in store. Like I'm here for it to sit in that space again of in between being like, "Eh, but this is comfortable. Like, this is sad. This gives me grief. This gives me sorrow. But then it's like, wait, what's over here? Like, let me go look at what this is over here and kind of play in that field of arena as well. Yeah, and I mean, how exciting is that? That you think there there wasn't more than what you had, but what you had didn't work out for good reason, right? So there is more for you, you know? Like there, there definitely is. And how exciting is that? That you haven't experienced that yet, but it is coming, mm-hmm. right? And also what you were saying about, you know, memories and things like that. If I look back on my last relationships, they were so powerful, each one of them in so many different ways. And it's so different. And that's what's so beautiful about each relationship that each one gave me so many different things. And each one, you know, has had a place in making me who I am now. You know, it is just they've been so influential. And I and when I look back on, you know, memories, I feel so warmly towards parts of each one of those relationships. And it's so individual to that person and that relationship. You know, I don't just look back on it as a whole and be like, oh, it's all bloody awful. It's like each person has always got a special place with me, you know, and each person will will always be like count in my past you know I won't forget you I don't think that you forget those those powerful memories like they're just they'll always be there and even if it's not oh I remember exactly what happened and it was that day and that it's just a feeling sometimes if I remember feeling that with you and that was so amazing and I'm so happy that that was in my past I love that and you just utilize it right like it's one of these things of like love exists and goes back to the conversation we were having earlier love exists in so many forms in so many ways, yeah. in so many people. Like, yes, yes, I get people might get mad, but like, I don't think it is with one person, you know, like it's this, and it might be the one person, but many different types of love. Like it's this yeah. evolution over a lifetime to be able to adapt, to be able to open to that and open yourself to this change. And, you know, I've been super obsessed with Tony Robbins' six human needs lately. Like, I don't know why, but we're here for it. Yeah. And like, <laughs> one of his things is always like, it's like certainty, uncertainty, significance, connection, and love, growth, and impact, whatever it is, like influence, helping, whatever purpose. Um, and one thing he talks about is the, like, we do this connection and love thing and they're on the same one, but like, because we're so afraid of actual deep love, we settle for connection because we've had heartbroken and we're scared to replace these memories because we're doing these kind of things. It's like, oh, then I'll settle for the breadcrumbs of connection because, well, that's safer. And then one of the other core needs is like certainty and uncertainty. And it's like, well, because that's more certain, you know, because my breadcrumbs are more certain that I won't get my heart broken, but then we're not hitting the bit, the, the ones that actually help our spiritual development, which is growth and purpose. Right. So it's like yeah. this whole spectrum of these things happening where it's so interesting, the human heart, like I can think back yeah. to eighth grade. I can remember his name. I can remember the girl that yeah. he left me for Like, I can remember these <laughs> things and it's like 20 years ago. I'm like, but you remember that feeling that like, what yeah. have you? And it starts to build that storyline where it's like, oh, then let me just settle for this safe thing. Let me not be too much. Let yeah. me not be too little. Let me act a certain way. Let me do these kind of things in this self-protection mode. And then we get to a yeah. certain age being like, why? Like, particularly like certain relationships too, like when it's mirrored back and you're like, what happened to that wild adventurous woman? What happened to those like little elements of my son? And it's like, oh, because we're playing safe because we're looking for this certainty when in reality that doesn't have access to growth or this orgasmic love that we're trying to like adventure into and grow into. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's so funny because I think I think one of the reasons, uh, I mean, settling happens so much. Mm-hmm. It really, really happens Especially so much. Especially like and at I, our age, like as we get yeah, older, like yeah. so many people. Yeah, so many people. And, you know, and I've definitely done it in my past before. And I think 
that's one of the most important parts of moving through pain because I think the reason one of the other reasons we settle is because we we know that if that thing that we've settled for ends it's not going to be as deeply excruciating as if something that we hadn't settled for ends you know so it's a form of self-protection as well right and so when you have done this healing work you don't feel like you need to do that anymore because you've really proven to yourself that you can handle it you it can get as excruciating as it wants to but you'll handle it right like you know and that is an important lesson to learn about yourself and that really looks different to everybody Mm -hmm. and it's a continuous thing like every time it's like oh I can handle this in this chapter of my life and this kind of thing like it's just always evolving yeah absolutely you know and I think in doing things to block your pain what you're also blocking is joy and Mm -hmm. I think people forget that and I think that you really can have a way higher experience of joy if you're not afraid of pain you know you can really open yourself up to it if you're blocking anything you're blocking everything Mm -hmm. to some degree right and so you know opening yourself is always harder it is always harder and being vulnerable is really hard it's not easy you know sometimes I guess you know I don't know if anyone listening will think like oh they're just saying like just go through the pain like as if it's not easy it's bloody awful mm. it like you know I remember being on the floor of my living room so many times and just thinking I don't know what to do when is it going to go you know and but it does it really does and mm. and you know your capacity for joy grows as you heal. That's why I literally think like we're both just so playful human beings. Like yes. because at the core, it's like, yo, like I will lay like when this happened, like I laid in bed until like 1 p.m. Like that never happened yeah. in my life. But like I didn't yeah. get out of bed. My best friend came over, like put her dog in my bed and was like, I'm gonna run errands, do some therapy with my dog, and then came back, made me a coffee, <laughs> told me to shower and brought me to oysters. She's like, let's go. Like you can be sad and get your butt up and go get some, like you smell, go yes. shower. Like it's, it's this <laughs> duality, but it's like, I think that's why, because like we can sit in that pain where it's like, I'm okay. You know, yeah. no one dies from a broken heart, even though a lot of us feel like it's, it's the most excruciating thing in the world, but it's like, can you sit and grace with that? Like, can you just be yeah. in full, like scream? Like I am loving this whole screaming in my car on the way to like some Pilates class right now. Like it's been the best therapy of like, no one yeah. knows you're screaming and then you get to Pilates and it's like this full fun expression dance party that's happening. And it's yeah. like, you get to have, yeah. and that's like the perfect expression of duality where it's like so much pain, get it out. And then we can call in the good, then we can show up, then we can do all these kind of things. But it's like, instead of compounding that in our body being like, oh, that's too much for me. And this is the lesson I'm sitting in right now where it's like, oh, it's too much for people. Like, don't share too much of it. Like, this is your brand. This is what you're doing. This is like your friendships, like, you know, that whole thing. But like what I'm learning so much is to just share share, share it in a way that's not like bleeding and victimizing. It's like, this Mm -hmm. is what, what my heart is actually doing. Like when someone asks you how you're doing, instead of being like, I'm okay. It's like, actually, feel like a whole bunch of plates are spinning and I'm not quite sure, but like, it's, I'm all of a sudden going to grow a next arm, even if a plate does fall, but it kind of feels like they're falling. Like, I don't really know what's happening right now. Like being yeah. honest with where your emotions are and understanding like your friends, like my best friend said the best thing to me where she, I was like, I feel like I'm just, cause I literally like lived by her side for four days after it happened. I was like, we need to co-regulate by that. I mean, I'm staying by, <laughs> I'm staying by your side. Like I'm not moving because it's that fear after a breakup. Like I don't want to go home. You know, like you yeah. finally leave your house and then you're like, I don't want to go home like that. Well, your that reality is completely different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she like said a thing. I was like, I feel like I'm like overstepping. And she's like, I'm not responsible for your emotions. Like I'm, you're, you're just here. Like, it's fine. And I was like, oh. it's yeah. such this anchor to be free in your emotions and not have other people absorb it. And to feel like it's a safe space to just be like, here's my heart. It feels like it's bleeding. Remind me of my power, hold space. Like how you asked, you're like, what do you need? You know? And like to have friendships like that really fucking matters, especially in spaces of grief and death and understanding. And you're so lucky to have her, you know, because that we really do need people around us when we're going through things like this. And, and, 
I wish I had done that more when I went through my breakup. I wish I had have said, do you know what? I, I need this and I actually say what I needed, you know, and some of the stuff that I needed wasn't what I would have said publicly on Instagram. Do you know what I mean? Like some of what I needed wasn't probably that socially acceptable, but I needed it, you know, and I, I, you know, I wish I had have said that more. And I think that's really important. You know, the people that are close to you, if you can't say what you need in, in the times that you need it, then you need to question those relationships mm -hmm. because, because really you've got to have people in your life that are there for you in the way that you need them to be there for you when you need it. And you're not always going to need it. That's mm -hmm. the thing, right? So don't feel guilty about asking for it because actually what it does is open up that relationship for them to be able to do the same for you when they need it. We're humans. We're always going to need it at different points. Exactly. So what would you recommend of like having that conversation or deepening that conversation with friendships? Like if you could have gone back, right? Like mm -hmm. into your heartbreak and wherever you were like to communicate that to your friendships, what would that conversation look like? That's a really good point because I actually I did have this in one of my friendships actually and I and I remember you know thinking right don't don't say what you really actually need because it sounds like you're not over it or it sounds like you're you know being petty or you know not being this high level version of yourself. And I was able to kind of try and be in a kind of higher state than I actually was. But I wish I had have thought, no, hang on, look, you don't need to be anything. She's your friend. So you just need to say exactly what you need, however it sounds. And I think, you know, now I kind of start those kinds of conversations like, I don't know if this is cool to say it. Sometimes I start like that or, but I, I want to ask for this, you know, or I really need this. And then I don't really explain it, right? Because I, before I would feel like I had to explain it. And then now I'm like, I'm not explaining it. This is what I need, you know, and if you're able to help me with that, brilliant. And if you're not, then, you know, I might need to go and ask somebody else, <laughs> but that's fine. You know, and, and you know, you're super lucky if you find someone that's open to that. Lucky or is it lucky? You know, I don't know. I mean, really, it's what it's what relationships and friendships should be. Mm -hmm. I think. Well, it's communicating boundaries, right? And if yeah. you don't have that, it's like starting that, right? Like you can just yeah. start. You don't have to explain this is what I'm doing and da 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 da. And you're breaching. Like we don't have to point the finger. It's just kind of sitting no. there being like what do I need right now before I enter this world, before I leave my house, before I call my phone, call anyone or do anything, what do I need today? Fantastic. Yes. How can I effectively communicate that to people around me? You know, yeah, and sometimes yes. that's like, like literally we were just talking about this where it's like, all my friends are hanging out tomorrow and they're like, da -da -da, like, cause they want to support. And I'm like, I'm not talking to any of you tomorrow. Like, I love you and I'm not talking to you. And that's all I said. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't need to explain it because that is the type of friendship that we built, right? Where it's like, but there are friendships and I can think back to where it was like, I have to explain, I have to do this. I have to be this person. I have to be the happy friend, especially like in my household, I was raised on honey over vinegar. And I always thought meant like, hide your feelings, you know, which yeah. instilled this whole time growing up. And so that's like the people pleasing kind of person. And then you get to a space where it's like, wow, my boundaries are actually not selfish at all. Because even if yeah. I'm, showing up fake to this person I'm also not being a good friend to them because that's not I'm not giving them my full self that's true that's right? true like, yeah it's just I don't know it's like a two-way thing where it's like yes it's hard because you're asserting yourself and we're not used to doing that especially as females we're not used to doing these kind of things but it's like to be able to sit there and be like this is what I need end of statement like that's yeah. and, like, and like thank you like thank you for that like this is what I need thank you I love you goodbye like yeah. turning off my phone, doing my yeah. kind of thing. It's like, you can do it in a way that's not like bossy bitch babe kind of vibes. Like you can do it from a loving space of like, this is what I need. I love you. I will see you Saturday. Like that kind right. of thing. And honestly, for me, I don't know about you, but I would want someone to say yes. that to me. 
right? Like I would, I would want my friend to say, sorry, I can't do anything today. I'm really not feeling it. I'd be like, great. I don't want you to do I, Why would I want to spend time with you if you're not feeling it? Mm -hmm. Like let you do you and then come back to me when you are feeling it or, or <laughs> let's do something much more low key. Like, you know, I don't, I don't want any more false versions of the way that people are right I just want you know you as you are like come as you are or don't come because you don't want to do you know it's yeah. just be who you are because that is that that is the only way to actually build any deep relationships with anyone and friendships anything you have to show up in authenticity Otherwise, you're just painting a false version of yourself and people aren't actually getting to know you. So how can you connect then anyway? Mm -hmm. And then you're sitting there being bitter, being like, no one understands me. And it's like, you're not, you're <laughs> not, not drawing the right it. picture. Like <laughs> That's, so That's so true. And I love what you said about, you know, waking up and saying to yourself, what do I need? And how do I do it? And how do I communicate that to other people? And that is a brilliant question to ask yourself, whatever state you're in right? Even every day that you wake up, that's really important to get clear on what you need. Oh yeah. It's like been this new thing I've been doing for the last like few months. Yeah. And I'm like, like today I was like, we're not answering that alarm right now. Like <laughs> not getting out of bed. And I'm like, we're here for it. whatever. What's the point of running your company if you can't sleep yeah. in one day? True. Very like, true. <laughs> but do you think something that was coming fresh is like, do you think because of the grief period and because of the breakup and because of this evolution of who you've become you now have deeper friendships because you know yourself in such a way do you feel like your friendships have also been impacted by that yeah that's such a good question I definitely lost friends mm -hmm. after and I think that happens right because I think when you go through such kind of monumental stages of your life it really shows you, you know, the depths of the relationships that you have. It kind of exposes those relationships, right? You know, how are they really? Because now I'm in a time of need. And before, you know, I just wanted to go out for dinner and I was fine, <laughs> you know? And now I need you and I need you in this way at the moment. And so it exposes them. And I think sometimes what's exposed isn't what you thought it was, right? Or isn't, you know, what is going to actually be good for you moving forward. And me personally, loyalty and support are my two greatest values in any relationship that I have um, with anyone. And so, you know, if I don't feel like I've got that, I think it's best to, you know, obviously bless it with so much love and be so grateful for what it was but it's not going to work for me moving forward and so yeah I did I did definitely lose a few people that were close to me but I definitely gained as well right you know there were so not so many but there were like a few people that came forward <laughs> I need to stop using that phrase because it wasn't those probably two or three they kind of came forward and and you know were amazing and that and that was surprising that it was those people you know and so those relationships deepened so it kind of my social circle kind of changed um a lot but it was kind of and it was very natural it wasn't you know deep decisions it was just very natural and in a way that's good right because you want people close to you that you know are fitting with the values that that you seek in relationships and that's brilliant so so yes now I feel like the circle of people I have is smaller but it's tighter right mm -hmm. and it's like it's more fulfilling and I feel more comfortable because I feel like I know that if I went through something dark tomorrow which can always happen right I know that I have people around me that will really be there in the way that I need them to be there and I hope that I can do that for them as well mm -hmm. it's a definition of safety you know, when you're yeah. like, I have people and usually it's just a handful, right? Like no matter where they are, but it's like, when we have that type of safety, it's like, oh, I can go to the capacity. I can chase my wildest dreams because that means if I fall, there's people there, you know? And sometimes yes. we don't have the luxury of doing that, but that really is a, I mean, we're 
communities the way we feel safety right like co-regulation is how we get into regulated states it's like yeah if we don't have that it's that should be the thing we're looking for not a relationship not these other things yeah. not this not these higher it's like where can I grow community so I feel like I don't have to do this alone and authentic community too right like where are those people yeah. Yeah. Where, like I can yeah. come and like sit on their couch and like take a nap like I don't need and like, that was so weird for me coming back to America, even with my best friend. She's like, why do you always come to my house? And it like has to be an ordeal. Like what I was like, I don't know. In Bangkok, like we didn't, yeah. we don't do that. Like it's like yeah. go to dinner and drinks and whatever. And she's like, yeah. just come to my house and take a nap. Like there is not a big, and I was like, Americans are weird. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it is now one of my favorite things. Cause I'm like, oh, like I remember doing this as like a teen, like going to people's yeah. house to watch Netflix and whatever. Like it was so casual, yeah. but like we got older and it all of a sudden became weird. And now, yeah. I mean, maybe it's just being in Thailand for so long where it's like, we just don't do that because our apartments are too small. Yeah. But like, it's like <laughs> and there's so many like places to go see, but it's like yeah. now being in this space where it's like, oh, like that feels so safe where it's like, yeah. I have this one a few like handful of people where it's like oh like come over and just like sit like hang out yeah. you, you don't even have to talk to me like you could just come yeah. and hang out and I'm like just be oh like that's what makes this feel so safe right now because it's like you can yeah. lean into that and if I didn't have that man I'd be scrolling his Instagram all day long even though there's absolutely nothing there like nothing changes in his Instagram <laughs> like, nothing. Like, yeah. I know I'm like I'm like can you update something like let me stalk you <laughs> Let me start. Yeah, exactly. I need some ammunition. I, yeah, I'm like, don't, I have no idea. But it's like one of those things where it's yeah. like, because I have the safety, I have the growing business, there's the pivot in the business, there's things going on. It's like, I'm not distracting. It's finding outlets of purpose. I was journaling on that aspect where it's like, when you're going through something, feel it. And where do you want your purpose to lie? Right. Because yeah. we find a purpose that isn't like, like I created healing happy on a broken heart. It was a full trauma response. Like that's how Bangkok was and that whole thing. That's why the evolution has been being back in the States, but it's like, when you actually go into creating something in a space of like, let me find my purpose in this and let that amplify my, my personal brand and who I am in my core being, that's so much safer. But if we're avoiding the feeling Cause we're like, let me just throw myself into work and do 18 hour days and distract myself and do this kind of thing. And then spend my evening drinking and then go do this and then work out 80 hours a day and like bounce around. And yeah. it's like, if we're going through something, feel it and find a purpose. I was just like, yeah. reflecting on that the other day of like, and I feel like you did that because all the universal alignment happened like during your breakup, it was yeah. like, ping, 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 ping. It was but it was so all bizarre. things that were so aligned with where you wanted to go. You yeah. know, it was just it was like, ping. <laughs> it was like, the best universal gift that I've ever received. Here's your breakup so gift. Nice. Oh, here's your breakup yeah. gift. Oh, it was really like that. And I was like, thank you. Like, I don't even know how to say thank you enough. But it was just, it was so funny. And I think that's a really, really important point that's kind of relevant to what we're talking about is that just because you're feeling these emotions and just because you're going through a breakup, it doesn't mean that you can't feel joy and it doesn't mean that you can't do really high level stuff. Like you were just saying as well, you know, you you were crying in bed in the morning and then in the evening you're eating oysters and drinking champagne and it's not that the pain isn't there or that it's gone away, but you're still doing beautiful things, right? It's like lifting your mood and, you know, it's not that we can't still attract amazing things. I... I attracted, you know, a um, mall in Bangkok approaching my brand and asking if we wanted to open a restaurant. And that was something in the whole years that I'd had my business that had never happened before. And that was <laughs> and that was so high level that I was like on the phone, like, what? I couldn't <laughs> believe it was happening. And that was about three weeks after my breakup, three or four weeks. And 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 then I set up this cafe and, you know, my ex and I, we broke up in August and by December I opened a cafe and it was just mad. And I thought I did all of that when I wanted to fall to my knees most days and just cry on the floor. And some days after everybody left, I would, you know, and I and I was still in dark because I've cried so many times in my restaurant not when there's loads of people in there <laughs> although you can right but I'm busy but um you know often you know when people will stay with me and we'll drink wine after 
you know, the rush hour. I've cried so many times, but it, so what? It didn't stop me from achieving things that were way beyond my wildest dreams and things that I hadn't achieved ever before when I didn't have a, a, a painful heart. Mm. So, you know, don't, it won't stop you like doing this hard work. It doesn't stop you. Sometimes it propels you mm. and like, let it, right? Like it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean like lying on the floor all day, every day. It might look like that some days, but like other days you'll fly too. You can fly even though you're in pain. Yeah. And you're not going to want to like, and when you're in a space of like self-love, it's like, you're not going to want to do that all day, every day. Uh, like, you yeah, get to yeah, a yeah. point where you're like, now nah, I'm just being a little bit over dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm ready. Yeah. Like, and you get to a point where you're like, oh, like this is just the drama side of me throwing a tantrum right now. Like it doesn't yes. need to be there. I'm not going to entertain that where it's like, there's healing. And then there's like victim mode. And we really have to be able to decipher between the two, but it is so true. Like we have the belief, right? Like that silly little secret book that we all were obsessed with what 10 years ago where we're like don't have a negative thought because if we have a negative thought all the things will never come true and it's like no that's not how that works like you can have your like literally that's why the master class is duality right like leading with a healing heart we were going to put broken but trauma-informed language more yeah. the better area yeah. where it's like yeah. your heart is healing it's not broken it's not broken forever no, it's, like, it's never healing. broken and you can yeah. walk with it like that's the whole basis of this whole rebrand of healing happy right helping women create businesses by turning their grief into gold turning their trauma into something that they can be helping other people with because we miss that point like god universe source didn't fuck shit up to give you this and only you and condemn you and what have you it's like they gave it to you to alchemize it, to do yeah. something, to sit there and be like, wow, I walked through that and I'm still standing tall, learning yes. and, and it hurts some days and there's trigger some days and it's heavy some days, but Hey, I'm here. Like, what yeah. can I do? You know, I'm, I'm yeah. sitting here crying and I'm in my restaurant. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but look at this space. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And you know, and, and you're, this is why you must always make sure that the rest of your life is full and never ever only have your relationship to bring you joy. That definitely should bring you joy, but there must be other parts. Make every part of your life full, you know. Is your social life rich enough and is it feeding you enough, right? And that doesn't have to look any kind of way, but does it feed you individually? And, you know, is your work life satisfying you mm -hmm. and if it's not what can you do right build it up you know don't let your work life be something that you don't like doing because you do it most of the time right like that's your life that's most of your life like change that and you know and then when something in any of those areas like your health or what else could you do to make yourself more well right mm -hmm. in all those areas if they are all built up when one area goes wrong which it always will at some points you know we, we just we're not just we're just not talking about it enough right but actually there are times when each one of those areas will fall but then you've got all the other areas to make sure that you don't completely collapse right and so when I had my breakup I had this business that I've built that brought me so much joy that was completely separate to him and so I was like well I'll move over here for a minute right and th and that and then it was like that went wild <laughs> and I was like whoa and now then I thought I wonder if that would have happened if we hadn't broke up you know I don't know mm -hmm. I like to think it wouldn't because then I'm even more grateful for the break <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just gonna plant that one it wouldn't have I'm just gonna say you don't know what happened when it was over but yeah mm -hmm. it was just and that's the thing just make sure everything is so full because then it's not so impactful it's still really impactful but it doesn't break your life exactly exactly it's the balance of all things yeah oh my dear I, I can literally <laughs> talk to that? you for ages I could yeah, talk to it's you so beautiful. I love you thank you for being I here I love you how oh can, my gosh absolute pleasure how can people get in touch with you and follow you and Oh, I'd love to get in touch with you all. Um, I, <laughs> I'm very, very, very active on Instagram, probably too active, but you know, 
I love it. So yeah, reach me there. So it's um, the.banana.warrior. We've also got our cafe Instagram page. If you want to follow our food and kind of what we're doing in Bangkok or come and visit us at any point, it's the.banana.warrior.cafe. We also have our website that you can kind of have a look at if you ever want to order desserts in um, Bangkok. All of the information's on Instagram. Um, and yeah, you'll see me a lot on there. If you follow me, my face is always on there. <laughs> cute little face always giggling and <laughs> I love that it's like at the cafe having a margarita and then all of a sudden at a club I'm like yeah yes, love I that. love you I, I miss you, you. <laughs> yeah, it's like just one margarita and then two seconds later it's like it's the like, loudest woo, woo, woo. I know I was talking I was talking to uh our friend Steph about it where she's like yeah these parties that they keep going to whatever they're at and I'm like yeah I'm seeing so many videos I miss it <laughs> It's just hilarious. I know like, our events are just getting out of hand. You know, we just, it's just like one wild, massive party in the cafe, which is brilliant because I always love that kind of vibe, yeah. but it's, it balances key too. Yes, I love it. It's good. Well, thank yeah. you, my dear. I'm going to try to turn yeah. it off and then I will. 